Yes, good morning. Welcome to this another series lecture about electrical wiring simulator or EWS. Today we're going to perform the fifth activity under the relays module. Okay, let's click this module and then let's proceed to the fifth activity which is entitled interlocking relay or interlocking circuit. Okay, so we will now apply the interlocking contacts here. Okay, let's click the play in the normal mode. And then let's proceed to the circuit. Let's explain first the circuit here. Okay, so, but before that, uh, let us assume first that, let's say the PB2, okay, the PB2 is responsible for our R1. So take note in this activity, we already have two relays. Okay, and then PB2 is, let's say, responsible for R1 to energize this R1. And this PB3 is responsible to energize this, let's say, R2. Okay, so if you click this one, this one should energize. If you click this one, this one should be in energized state. Okay, so what we want to do here is if we click this PB2 and this one is already in its energized state, no matter how we press this PB3, this R2 should not turn on. Okay, so we have to release our finger first in the PB2 okay, before we can turn on this PB3. So if your finger is in this PB3, so and holding this PB3, and then this one is already turned on, so no matter how we press this PB2, this R1 should not turn on. So that is the function of the interlocking system, interlocking circuit, okay? So there is this should only one relay working in this particular uh, diagram, okay? So how are we going to implement this one in our electrical diagram? Okay, let's take a look here. So, uh, as what we can see, this PB2 is responsible for R1, PB3 is responsible for R2. So, what we can observe here is we have this normally closed here, and then this one is uh, opposite to this relay. Okay, so if we have R1 here, the normally closed here is R2, and then if you have R2 here, R2 coil, the normally closed here is R1. Okay, so this R2 and R1 here represents the interlocking circuit in this particular electrical diagram. So how does this work? Okay, so if you press this one, okay, if you press this one, the current now will now be able to flow from these 24 volts to this R1 here. Okay, since this is normally close R2, the current will be able to go back to this, uh, to the negative volts, hence this R1 will be in its own state. Okay, that is assuming that your finger is still in this, holding this PB2. Now, take note that if this R1 is in its energized state, all of the normally open contact will be closed of the R1, and then all the normally closed contact will be open. Hence, this one will open, this one will close. Okay, now, let's try to analyze this second rung here. If this one is energized, okay, this one is open. So we have an open contact here, open circuit here. So no matter how we press this PB3, okay, we close the circuit here, the current will not be able to flow going back to this zero volts because there is an open circuit here. Okay, hence, this R2 will remain in its off state. Okay, so that is how this works. So if you release your finger in this PB2, holding this PB2, then you press this PB3, this R2 will energize now. Okay, if this R2 is energized, this one will open here. Okay, if this one is open here, no matter how you press this PB2, this R1 will not turn on or in energized state. Okay, because of the open here. Okay, so this is how this interlocking circuit works. Now, let's try to wire this one and simulate it uh, in our, uh, in this activity here. So, 24 volts to the PB2. 24 volts to the PB2, input of the PB2. Okay. And then the output of the PB2 to the input, take note of the labeling. In this particular case here, R1. Okay. Output to the 13 of the R1. To the 13 of the R1. Oops. Output to the 13 of the R1. Next, the 14 through the 9 of the R2. 14 through the 9 of the R2. 
And then the 1 of the R2, which is in this particular case here, will be going back to the negative of this power supply. Okay, and then okay, I think that's it for the first rung. Okay, the second rung, we have to connect the input of the PB3, which is in this particular case here. We have to connect this one to 24 volts or to the input of the PB2 since this is connected to the 24 volts already. So we can connect it to the input of the PB2. Okay. Input of the PB2. And then the output of the PB3 will be connected to the 13 of the R2. Take note of the R2 here. Thirteen of the R2. Now the fourteen of the R2 should be connected to the nine terminal of the R1. So fourteen to the nine terminal of the R1. Fourteen to the nine terminal of the R1. Next, the one should be connected to the zero volts or to the one of the R2. Let's take a closer look. The one. So I think it would be easier if we connect it to the one of these uh, R2 here. Okay, the R1 of one connect not and with the R1 uh, with the first terminal of the R2. Okay, let's connect it here. Okay, so that's for the second rung. Let's connect now the uh, third rung. So the 10 of the R1 connected to the input of the PB2, PB3, or 24 volts. Let's take a closer look. The 10. Okay, so I think it would be easier if we connect it to the input of the PB3. Okay, so we are going to connect the R1 to the input of the PB3 here. So this one is the 10. Oops. Connect it to the input of the PB3. Okay, and then the 6 of the R1. 6 of the R1 to the input of the PL2. The 6 of the R1, which is in this particular case here, input of the PL2. Next, the output of the PL2 to the first terminal of R1, R2, or the 0 volts. Let's take a closer look. Output of the PL2. So I think it would be easier if we connect it directly to the 1 of this R1 here. Okay. and then one okay so next this portion here take note that this is 10 10 again but this is not the 10 here this is the 10 terminal of the r2 so it means this r2 here okay so the 10 we can connect it to the 10 of this r1 here input of the pb3 so i think we can connect this one to the uh, input of the PB3 again. Okay, input to the PB3. Let's take a closer look. Input of the PB2. So let's try to connect this one to the input of the PB3. Okay, this 10 here to the input of the PB3. 10 here. 2. Oops, and 2. To the input of the PB3. Okay, something like that. Okay, and then the 6 of this R2 will be connected to the input of the PL3. The 6 of the R2, which is in this particular case here, connected to the input of the PL3. So a single wire will do. Okay, and then we can connect the output of the PL3 through this R1 here, or the easiest way is to connect this one to the output of the PL2. Output of the PL3 to the output of the PL2. Oops. Output of the PL3. Okay. To the output of the PL2. Okay, let's zoom it out. Okay. So, let's start the simulation. 
So the moment we start our simulation, we should expect that this, both these R2, uh, PL2 and PL3 will be in off state because we are using the normally open push button, uh, normally open contacts, and all of these uh, R1 and R2 should be in its de-energized state. Let's click the play or submit button. Okay, good, passed. So if we are going to click this one here, okay, and then hold this one using your finger. Okay, so on. So no matter how you press the PB3 here, you will not be able to turn on this PL3 here, the PL3 or the R2. However, if I'm going to release my hand in the PL P push button number two, okay, oops, the PL2 is now turned off or the PL, the R1 is now in its de-energized state. If I'm going to press the PB3, okay, so the R2 will be in its energized state and then the PL3 is turned on. So no matter how I press this PB2, okay, so this R1 is not uh, turning on or energizing and the PL2 is not turning on. If I'm going to release this one, it uh, the R PL3 is now turn off okay so in the next lesson we will combine the interlocking and then the holding contact okay so see you in the next lecture